Alright guys, today we're going to talk about something that is kind of taboo in the weightlifting industry, but it's one of those things that everybody does it, nobody really wants to talk about it. Today we're going to talk about steroids. That's right, gear, juice, roids, whatever it is that's known in your area, we're going to talk about that today. Now, before I go into that topic, I know I promised you guys to give you some recipes as far as for your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. So what I've done is this. I did plenty of research because the video was just going to take too long for me to explain what you should do quantity. So I have added a bunch of links in the description area. Go visit those and it'll give you ideas for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. Also, if you stick to the list that I gave you guys in one of the previous videos and those of you that requested it, I even emailed it to you, you can definitely go through that and just pick out the breakfast items and eat those during breakfast in obviously moderate quantities if you're trying to lose weight and eat them in just increased amount of quantities if you're trying to gain weight, maybe add some peanut butter, etc. The one thing I will tell you though is that as far as condiments are concerned, you want to keep that to a minimum. You want to use, instead of regular salt, you want to use sea salt, you want to use pepper, you want to use, for example, herbs like rosemary, etc. Instead of sugar, you use brown sugar or use honey. So at least keep that in mind. Cinnamon is also good for you to utilize. Just keep that in mind when you make your foods to make sure that you make the proper condiments. Now that I've covered that part, I want to talk about something that I know of. And I mentioned in a video before that I had utilized steroids back in the day. Now the one thing that I'm concerned about is that I do get emails. They're not a whole bunch, but I do get emails about some of you guys wanting to inquire about what I think about testosterone, therapy, how to utilize it, how much, proper age to utilize it, etc. So I'm going to give you guys a quick crash course on the, on the topic. This is something you can research on your own. It is online. The information I'm going to give you is by no means me advocating for you to utilize it, but I'm a, a hog for knowledge, so the more I know, the better. There are two different kinds or two different forms of ingesting steroids. You can either do it by syringe, which is an oil or water-based form, or you can do it on a pill form. The difference is that the pill form is a lot harder on your liver. The injectable form is direct to the muscle. It's basically the, the difference of having a vehicle with a carburetor and having one that's fuel injected. There's also something you should know about this. Now there's a myriad of different steroids you can utilize for this. There's testosterone, there are things to help you lose weight, there's things that are actually utilized to treat deficiencies in people's bodies and even to treat asthma that if used for the purpose of bodybuilding or weightlifting or weight losing actually can help you out quite a bit in those areas so long as you know what you're doing or you have a doctor or pharmacist that can probably advise you a little bit better on what the therapy should look like. Now I know a lot of you are probably going to be out there, steroids, taboo, who the hell does that and all that kind of stuff. Well let me tell you this. Steroids are illegal primarily in the US. They're not illegal in most parts of the Middle East and Europe. Obviously those countries are a little bit more lackadaisical if you want to call it that. They don't feel that they have to capitalize on everything in the country. The US is a capitalistic economy so it's a little bit different for us. But you can actually go get a testosterone blood test done. You can get done a laboratory order by your doctor. And if you do have a testosterone deficiency, meaning that you, your body produces less than 200 milligrams of testosterone, then they will prescribe you testosterone and they will actually set up dates for you to get injections done by that doctor or a qualified nurse or another physician. Now something that I did want to touch on regarding steroids, there's a lot of stuff out there and the reason why people have a fear of steroids, utilizing them and whatnot, is because they get all the negative rap. They get like, well, you're going to get your members going to shrink. It's going to be permanent. You're going to lose all your hair. You're going to start growing hair in sparse when you don't want to grow hair. Well, 50-50 as far as those reasons. Yes, if you do abuse the steroids, you can experience hair loss because usually what causes male pattern baldness is actually an excess of testosterone production within your body. So people that are bald are usually people that have very high testosterone levels. Now when you inject testosterone, you usually get on-site hair growth. That means that if you, if you shoot your shoulders, you shoot your rear end, you shoot your pecs, you shoot wherever, you're going to be prone to potentially start growing thicker, darker hair in those areas. Now the one thing you have to be aware of is that some of these side effects are not permanent. The hair thing, yeah, if it happens to you, it's going to be permanent. You also got, might have something called gynoclimasty, which is basically a growing mass that happens usually behind your, your tit, basically, your breast as a guy, your tit. And if you don't treat that early on, you, the only way to remove it is through surgery. Now the other part is going to be your gonads, and yes, I'm using the scientific name for your nuts, 
but in that area, what happens is this. When you inject testosterone into your body, your nuts, they basically provide, uh, produce a certain amount of testosterone. When you inject synthetic testosterone into your body, what happens is that the production level of the gonads decreases because let's say that your body produces 1,000 milligrams of testosterone, you're injecting 500 milligrams, now you're at 1,500, the body's got to decrease their levels by 50% just to keep a normal level within your system. So that's usually why your nads shrink. Now what happens once you get done with your cycle is that usually you're, they, they recuperate. Now, depending on how you do it, you can let them recuperate on their own, which is not a recommended way, or you can do post-cycle therapy, which then obviously that's going to let your gonads get back to a normal level or a normal size quicker to get back to normal testosterone producing levels, and obviously it's going to help you keep any gains that you worked on during that period of cycle. Another thing, cycles of steroids. When people that decide to participate by using synthetic testosterone, how long do they go and exactly how does that work? Usually what happens is that they plan out anywhere between an eight week cycle to a 12 week cycle, depending on how you're doing. The amount of steroids that the individual takes also depends on what their goals are. Bodybuilders, they probably do 2000 plus milligrams of testosterone per week, which is a ridiculous amount of testosterone. But for the people that are just trying to maybe put a little weight on, decrease their fat, whatever their goals are, they don't have to go that hardcore because it does have an effect on your body. The damage that your body truly experiences are for people that actually abuse. Everything in excess is harmful. I remember Cat Williams made a comment about you consuming an entire bottle of, uh, of Tylenol for a headache and that that's gonna be your last headache because chances are that much aspirin could probably kill you. And like everything else, whether it's medications that are prescribed, testosterone, doesn't matter what it is, a lot of medications do have side effects. Some of them are permanent, some of them are temporary, or just for a duration of you having to take that therapy, if you want to call it that. Now, how does testosterone work? There are receptors in your body that are, are the receptors for testosterone, and then your body reacts to an increased level or decreased level of testosterone. There are pros and cons. I've gone over most of the cons for testosterone. I need to give you the pros. The pros is this. You're going to sleep. You're going to have extremely high levels of energy. You're going to sleep a lot better. You're going to be a lot more positive. The downside is that some of that energy, if you have a temperament, if, you have one, if you're one of those people that have a chip on their shoulders, you may get into altercations because it's nothing different than you reverting yourself back at a later age to, for example, us guys when we were back in our teens and going through puberty, which is the stage of like 12 to 23 or whatever the age is. But it's basically you're reverting to that, to that stage at a later point in your life. So you're bigger, you're stronger, and you're reverting back to when you were teenagers, so you're gonna have a lot more energy. And if somebody bumps you in a club, you're probably gonna to wanna to prove yourself. So you have to keep yourself in check about these things so that you don't act out in situations like that. Now, post doing a cycle, there's also something called a cleaning period. The cleaning period are different medications that you that you can take, which uh, one of them is Clomiphene, Armidex, Novadex, which are ones that are basically testosterone blockers. And what that does is that it cleans it out of your system so that your receptors can get back to reconstructing themselves because it does burn them out when you do a cycle because you're putting your body in overdrive. So it takes your body a time to recuperate and you're just basically helping it along to basically get the, the testosterone out of your body just to get yourself back to normal levels so that your body can restart its normal production of that hormone in your body. There's also an age when if you're really considering to do this that I, I would personally say if nobody can talk you out of it, you've done your research, you feel comfortable with it, you talk to doctors, you've done everything you can and you feel comfortable about taking the leap and utilizing steroids, then I would tell you is do it after you're like 25 or 26 because until that age or so, your body is still producing very high levels of testosterone. You don't start decreasing those levels and you start touching to your late 20s, early 30s and it just starts decreasing, obviously, gradually. It's not an off the cliff drop. It, that starts usually at age 40, 50 plus, that's when you really see the curvature getting uh, really s steep as far as you declining on the testosterone production levels of your body. Another thing you wanna be aware of is the cost. Usually, a cycle of steroids can be pretty pricey depending on if you have the connections or you don't have the connections. If you go through, through obviously, the black market or you go through legal channels and go through a doctor because your test levels are low. But I can tell you that a regular testosterone cycle, let's just say testosterone with DECA, which is usually what most people do, you're probably looking somewhere around $300 for 10 shots of each. Um, if you add pills in there, your cycles can get up pretty high. I mean, you, you can get up to probably $500, $600 for an eight week cycle of testosterone. And you also have the, the potential danger that the product that you get is either fake if you get through the black market or it could not be properly packaged, meaning that 
you can literally have an infection from obviously injecting some of this stuff into your body. So you have to be very, very cautious. Make sure that the source that you're getting it from is a source that you trust, that has been proven. If it's a doctor, you shouldn't have a problem. Make sure it's pharmaceutical grade if you're gonna utilize it. But just be aware of all these things in the event that you're absolutely considering it or you are going to be utilizing that kind of stuff. And finally, the last thing that you wanna be aware of is the rest period in between cycles. Usually, you wanna give your body minimally the same amount of rest time as the amount of time that you were on steroids. So if you were on steroids for eight weeks, you wanna give your body minimally another eight weeks of not touching anything. Obviously, stay eating healthy, working out. Drinking cranberry juice is very good. Also, milk thistle, this help out, obviously, cleaning out your liver, which is usually taking steroids, kind of sets the enzymes out of whack. Doctors can tell you by just laboratory work. But I can tell you that, minimally, you want to give your body the equal amount of time you were on cycle, you want to give it off cycle. Because obviously, you want the receptors to recuperate so that next time, if you do decide to do a follow-up cycle after the fact, then you want to make sure that your receptors have recuperated and they'll be able to give you the same or at least similar results and gains on your next cycle. I hope that any of you that were curious about the topic, that have sent me the inboxes, that have had the discussion with friends, I hope this gives you some kind of an insight. If you do have interest in learning more, I suggest that you Google. There's tons of information on there before I ever utilized steroids the first time. I had the same fears that most people have, which is, well, my dick's gonna shrink, my balls are gonna shrink, I'm gonna lose all my hair. All this kind of stuff goes through your mind, but once you do the research, you start understanding some of these things. Yes, there are risks. Yes, if you abuse it, you're gonna hurt yourself, but there are also efficient ways of, of doing it. If not, doctors wouldn't be doing it legally by prescription, so there's a proper way of doing it, and it's proven because, like I said, doctors actually do cycles for people as long as they have a deficiency in testosterone. By the way, guys, it goes without saying, but I don't want any of you to send me emails asking me to hook you up with a contact that I know that might sell this stuff because this video is just made to give you guys information and hopefully the ones that had the curiosity, either I scared you off or I made you want to do more research or I made you want to think twice. But like I said, if you really want to learn, just go online. There's tons of information regarding that. So I hope that this serves you in some positive manner in your life and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.